So before anything else, I want to be entirely transparent that I'm mostly making this video because I don't have anything else ready for this week. Um, I am working on like three or four other videos right now, but a lot of them are taking a lot more work than I was expecting. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to do this because I feel like it's... Okay, so Irithel is probably my least favorite level in the trilogy, barring maybe like the frigid outskirts, which I mean, you know, the frigid outskirts are awful. Um, and it shows off a lot of what I really dislike about Dark Souls 3 a lot better than the high wall because, you know, the high wall is like a tutorial area that's just like getting me used to the stuff, which is why I decided to use it. Um, but again, Irithel is a bit more drastic. Uh, and, I mean, immediately starting off, this Pontiff Beast location is just horrendous. Um, the fact that it appears behind you, like, it's it's not even that it shows up behind you and then it makes noise. It, like, it literally just spawns behind you, and there's nothing you can possibly do to know that that's going to happen other than play the game. Or have, have played the game before, you know? Um, ignore my absurd health bar. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to turn this playthrough into its own video because of the weapon that I'm using. Um, I have a plus 10 here. I had a plus 10 before Fort, which is kind of like the premise of the video. It's 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 fine. <laughs> but it's, it's raw infused, which is why my health and stamina are the way they are. Anyway, uh, some people seem to misinterpret what I said in the high wall video. Um, I said that I run through areas... And I might not understand the game design as well as I would have. But I meant that as, like, now I run through the areas, right? Um, after having played all the games, now that I, when I replay them, I run through the areas sometimes. And I feel like that's how most people tend to replay the games. I haven't slowly gone through Dark Souls 3 in a long time, especially this level. Oh my god, why are there so many? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I do like that there's the shield one kind of in the back that's adding support for the other ones rather than, you know, also attacking us aggressively at the same time. But having two... Um, uh, Jesus. And, like, you can kite one, right? And I'm sure the game does expect you to kite one, but it's impossible to know that that second one exists in the first place just because it's, like, behind the corner. I don't know. It doesn't... It doesn't sit right with me, the fact that you cannot possibly know that that second one exists until it attacks you. Um, this isn't the bad part of the level. It gets significantly worse later on. But honestly, even these guys are annoying. And right up here is another example of, you know, really not bad level design, but level design that focuses on things that I don't enjoy, focuses on skills that I don't think are fun to test um first of all the fact that uh, the fact that there is so ma why did they do so much damage they're just little guys jesus um the fire witches there are two fire witches when you first see them why do they do so much damage i guess i'm not using good armor um two fire witches when you first see them jesus um Plus the three guys and then three more coming up on you. It's a lot of enemies to be introduced to a new enemy with. Okay, wow. Okay, so a potentially more effective way to handle this scenario is, believe it or not, the thing that people said that I shouldn't do. People specifically, so many people, like maybe if you didn't run past all the enemies, you wouldn't think that the level design was bad because it's not designed for that. I know it's not designed for that. I said I'd do that now. <laughs> Ugh. But clearly, running past can make certain encounters significantly easier, like that one. Uh, though I am surprised that the Fire Witch de aggroed. Wow, this is a lot of enemies. <laughs> oh god. The other pontiff knight. I guess that's why there's a corner here. Uh, I love how enemies' weapons don't bonk. Oh, hi. 
A single Pontiff Knight on its own isn't bad, but having a bunch all at once is really annoying uh, because of uh, how quickly they attack, especially. There we go. Went significantly better this time. Made it back up to where I was completely hit of this. Why didn't that one make noise? <laughs> Dark Souls 3 is such a well-made game. <laughs> And honestly, like, the fact that they show you both Fire Witches at once, like, the fact that you can see the second one just fine, um, does mean that the second one being there isn't all that bad. But the fact that it's impossible to know, like, with their attacks, the fact that the top one can hit you um, with either the Flamethrower, the Fire Trail, or the Fire Pillar, like, you just can't know that the top one will be able to hit you. Um, excuse me. So you might think that it's safe to focus on one, take it out while the other one is like running toward you or whatever. And that's just not an option. When, you know, actually they're both going to be attacking you at once no matter what you do. Also, that's a really weird illusory wall. And I think the only one like that in the game, let alone, you know, this series. <clears throat> there might be other instances of like railings that disappear. I just can't think of any off the top of my head because they don't need to you know, um, miracles or pyromancies or whatever that would be required for achievements. I haven't, you know, exhaustively explored every single area in all three games yet. Hopefully, eventually, I'll get there. <laughs> um, I, like, I don't play through these levels slowly very often, which means I don't explore them very often. Uh, this instance of, like, seeing everything right there before you have to go fight them um, I think is significantly better than the other scenario. Oh my god! Okay, never mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Jesus. Oh god, why? Okay. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> okay, the fact, first of all, the fact that the the three enemies, the Fire Witch and the two Pontiff Knights, aggro on you before you even go into that area so you can't, like, safely look around the corner. Uh, it's impossible to be slow and observant like it is in Dark Souls 2. Um, which, I mean, like, that's not an instance of me not being observant to avoid a an ambush like, you know, like I said was so good about Dark Souls 2. Instead, it was an instance of the game making it impossible to avoid an ambush. Uh, there's something else I was going to say, but I'm sure another instance of that, or at least something similar, will come up. <laughs> also, like I said in Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 2 is the only game that I have personally experienced any consequences whatsoever from durability, other than like my very first playthrough of Dark Souls 1 where I used a crystal straight sword. And went down to the demon ruins uh, right after fighting Quailag. <laughs> anyway, this right here, this um, after this bonfire is where the game gets, or this level gets really, really bad. Like, first of all, the invisible enemies. I don't think having the invisible enemies is necessarily, like, bad. Um, but the fact that they're, that it's not communicated that they're invisible enemies at all. What is that noise? Stop making that noise. Gross. The fact that it's not communicated that there are any invisible enemies. The fact that, um, like, I don't know. Like, see, this it's completely invisible now. Like, you can't even see the eyes anymore. Um, like, the fact that it can even happen is absurd. I have no idea how many enemies are here just because they can go completely invisible like that. Um, <clears throat> but that's not as bad as instances that will be coming up soon. Of course, you know, dogs in this game are incredibly annoying. Hey, there was an enemy behind me. Crazy. It's almost like... What? There's another dog? Jesus. Okay. It's almost like I couldn't see that enemy because it was literally invisible and there was no way I could possibly be observant to avoid it. Like... Uh, I understand. Like, I'm not... Again, I'm not saying that this is bad. Um, I am, however, saying that I don't like these things about Dark Souls 3. I understand why you would like the chaos and the intensity of the combat encounters or whatever. I'm not saying this is 
bad. I'm saying that this is not something that I like in these games. Um, I'm saying that the way Dark Souls 2 expects you to be observant to avoid ambushes rather than, you know, expecting you to be ambushed and then deal with it, right? I prefer that. I'm not saying it's better. Uh, I say, I'm saying I prefer it. And a lot of people seemed to think that I thought dealing with ganks was bad. Ganks are not bad. I like ganks. I like fighting multiple enemies. Crowd control is a fun skill to test and learn. And, like, I enjoy um, fighting multiple enemies at once because that's a different skill. What I don't enjoy is not being able to use strategy to do that and just kind of having to be good at the game. <laughs> and, look, I... And I say that because Dark Souls 2 isn't hard, right? Um, it's difficult to learn the skills to make the game itself easy, but Dark Souls 2 does not rely on skill whatsoever. Dark Souls 1 does not either. I mean, in some spots, obviously, it'll be easier if you have some sort of, like, um, what's, that, what's the word? Like, you know, literal, like, play skill. Um, obviously, it's going to be easier like that. I thought there was a chest up here. Uh, is it down here? It is. Anyway, Dark Souls 3 focuses and requires a lot more skill than Dark Souls 1 and 2 ever did. Um, and again, not a bad thing. It's totally cool that you like this more. And I do think this is a fun game. I very much enjoy Dark Souls 3 a lot. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing it so much. I wouldn't be airing my grievances so much. Like... I wouldn't want to play it enough to air my grievances, but I don't know. <laughs> this is, I'm not doing this because I hate the game and I think you shouldn't like the game. And if you like the game, you're a bad person or whatever. I'm, I think that this is a fun game and I think it's fun to explain why I don't enjoy it as much as the others. I think it's fun to uh, go through and understand the games at their level um, I think this is a fun exercise. I enjoy playing the games. Whoa! What the hell? Why was unable to move? There's another one? What? Okay. What causes it... Their um, eyes to be visible? Because there must be something, right? There must be some way you can reliably see their eyes so that you don't constantly get ambushed. Is it just like when you get close that it fades away? I know it has something to do with the light sometimes, I think. I don't know. Ouch. I swear I'm not bad at the video game. <laughs> and see, that is a good... That's an instance where I did see that one. Um, and I knew it was coming, but I was getting rid of the magic one because that one was more of a threat. Uh, because Dark Souls 3 expects you to be able to deal with ambushes like that, right? I knew I was being ambushed, and I knew which direction I was being ambushed from, and I was able to deal with it accordingly. So I was able to anticipate that I would need to dodge even before that enemy became visible in the first place. That is an instance of what I think is significantly more fun. But like the fire witch just being around the corner earlier, even though I avoided damage from it. I don't know. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know why I don't find that as fun. Um, and it's not that I think it's not fun. Again, uh, I do think that this game is very fun. I do like a lot of what it does. Um, and I do think it's worth having. It's not like I would want this game to be like Dark Souls 1 because I can just go play Dark Souls 1, right? Um, this game doesn't take away anything. As much as I would like more Dark Souls 1, I still think that this game, you know, has a reason for existing, and I enjoy it on its own merits. <clears throat> I just enjoy it less. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to be very upfront about that, because, like, when, when people criticize my favorite things, um, especially when they don't use ex opinionated language right like when they're like oh well that's bad like no it's not you can't just say it's objectively bad i enjoy that about it you can't like what is the point of a video game right it's to be fun it's to be something enjoyable um and if i enjoy something in a video game that the uh, the video game is objectively not bad uh like i'm not saying it's objectively good either i'm just saying it's objectively not bad uh and so under that guys under the idea that, you know, like, I, under that, I don't think any art can be bad, uh, objectively, anyway. Like, you cannot enjoy art. Um, you know, games, movies, paintings, books, whatever. But that doesn't make it objectively bad. Uh, actually, there are a couple 
there are a couple things where I, I would maybe say it, it is objectively bad. Um, cuties is an instance, like, but that's not bad on the merit of it being art. It's bad because, you know, it is, it causes bad things. Not, not that it causes bad things, but it is the bad thing being caused, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cuties is bad. Not because it's art, but not because it's bad art, but because what it focuses on is bad and should not be something that is focused on, especially in that way. Um, anyway, moving away from that topic, back to Dark Souls. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually killed any of them. I've never explored that area. I got the Estus soup, even though I didn't take damage. Um, and like, okay, so in my first playthrough, I did genuinely try to explore Irithyll a lot. Um, however, I completely missed that doorway. I had no idea that you could actually get up to the Silver Knight Archer from here. I thought that it was just somewhere in Anor Orlando that I never found, you know? But yeah, turns out you can go up a stairway right here and get up to the Silver Knight Archer. Ouch. And... Actually, I learned that in the Corvian Scythe playthrough, or the Scythe playthrough, rather. I guess it wasn't a Corvian Scythe playthrough. Um, yeah, I had no idea that you could go up here and find all these other Silver Knights. Whoa! <laughs> See, that's an instance where it's not really an ambush. You already... Well, okay. When you go into that room for the first time, and you start fighting the Silver Knight, that, I, went, I already knew to go around that wall in the first place, because I played this game before, right? But if you haven't played the game before, and you don't know to go around that wall, I would say that it is very much an unfair ambush. Um, maybe you would have time after you hear the arrow firing sound to like dodge, but if you don't know where it's coming from, you know you don't know the timing that you need to dodge with. I don't know. It feels like unavoidable damage in a, in most scenarios. It is likely going to be unavoidable damage. And in this instance, like, again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I just think that that's not really what the first two games were built around, and that's what I came to enjoy. You know, not ever being forced to take damage outside of a few specific scenarios, you know, like answering Dito's room or whatever, um, or the Stray Demon Arena. Uh, arguably the Hellkite Bridge. Um, arguably... Actually, well, I don't know. Dark Souls 2 expects you to take damage a lot more than Dark Souls 1 because that's just kind of how the game is built. Um, like, especially, like, even Frigid Outskirts, as much as I hate it, I do think it has its merits. Um, not necessarily as a multiplayer level, but more so in the sense that um, it's, it expects you to build around it, right? And you're expected to build, like, your armor and your, not build your armor, but choose your armor and your weapons specifically to be good against the ice and the magic damage that the reindeer do. Um, you're expected to have a good shield, right? You're not expected to dodge every single enemy. Um, and in that sense, I do think that that level has its merits. Like, just like how this level has its merits. I just... It just didn't do it well, obviously. Um, and this level, absolutely, I think, like, from an intersubjective sense and from a game design, like, what it was trying to accomplish, I do think this level is better in that way. Um, I just don't enjoy playing through Aerithel, and that is a great example of why. <laughs> you have the two dogs on you, and then the invisible um, magic user who's constantly shooting fire and darts at you. Or, you know, whatever magic projectile that is. And I think at this point in the game, you're not really expected to be learning anything. Um, I would say you're not really expected to learn anything after, like, Abyss Watchers um, beyond, you know, individual encounters and maybe how to build better or whatever um so i'm not gonna fault the game on not expecting ambushes because you are absolutely supposed to expect ambushes at this point um <clears throat> but then you know whether or not they're fun to deal with is a completely different thing and then that see that time i was able to deal with the dogs much more effectively simply because i got lucky <laughs> and that is another thing that i do not like about this game um, that there's a lot of inconsistency. And again, it's not that the other games didn't have inconsistency, but the inconsistency, inconsistency was such that you could consistently deal with it. Well, in this game, like with the, the first two dogs, right? 
it was just so much um, all at once on top of the magic user that it was essentially impossible for me to deal with that uh, without like running away or whatever, which I'm just not expecting to have to do. <laughs> I don't know. That said, this is a good shortcut location, I think. That's uh, actually reminds me a lot of in Artorias of the Abyss in Ulysseal. Just before the room with the prisoner, there's like that group of four hollows, the bloatheads, right? And you have the elevator there that goes straight back up to the Ulysseal Township bonfire. And I think that's a very similar spot to have a shortcut. And I think that's a really good spot to have a shortcut after, you know, that relatively difficult section with the four dogs or whatever. See, like, <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like these invisible enemies do have... They, they could have been used for something fun, but in this instance, I just don't think they're very fun to deal with, especially because um, you have the, the magic user constantly... Whoa! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's never happened to me before. Okay. Um, especially because you have the magic user attacking you all the time here as well, which is incredibly frustrating. Is there a dog in here? Is that just what these guys sound like? I think that's just what you guys sound like. I don't know. And... Okay, so... Uh, Irithyll is one of those levels that's like... I, I want to run through it just to get it over with. But if the dogs weren't so inconsistent... Um, you know, if there, if there were enemies that like weren't so annoying to deal with... I don't think it would even be that bad. Uh, if I could consistently get rid of the dogs... And I don't know if this is a skill on, issue on my part, but even if it is... Um, if I could more consistently deal with the dogs, or if I could more consistently dodge the magic users, uh, the invisible magic users, if I could more consistently predict when something was going to be around a corner, or, um, you know, when something would drop on my head, then I don't think it would even be that bad for me. It's just incredibly infuriating to be going through a level and then to just die. Um, and then the next time I do it, you know, I do it no problem, no issues, first try. Or, well, I guess second try. <laughs> and then the next time I play through the level to die three times to the same spot. <laughs> and then succeed on the next time without healing at all through the entire level. Um, I don't know. Not a bad level. Once again, I, I want to be very, very clear about that. I like this game. This game has its merits. I This level is... I like this level. Um, I pro Honestly, I probably like playing through it significantly more than the Fritted Outskirts. Um... But just from a, the instant, or the, the, like, what I prefer in these games, once again, um, I just really do not like this level. And I do think that it is one of my least favorite in the trilogy, overall. Again, not including places like the Frigid Outskirts. <laughs> I don't really like Broom Tower either. Like, the entirety of Broom Tower is really annoying. Base game Dark Souls 2 is really good, though. I don't like the DLC. I know a lot of people really like the DLC. I just don't <laughs> very much. Um, if there's another level like this, or that you want me to go through like this, uh, I want to hear my thoughts and opinions, or if you want to understand um, why I do or do not like it, or, I don't know, you know, whatever. If there's, if there are more levels that you want me to go through like this, Jesus Christ. Again, huge inconsistency. I've literally never seen that happen before. I've never had him do that. <laughs> if there's another level that you want me to go through like this, let me know, because I would love to. I'm having really fun, a lot of fun re recording this. Whoa. Pontiff. Okay. Right. I don't like Pontiff. And that, I, know, I forgot that that was contentious. Pontiff is one of my least favorite bosses in this game. Are you not supposed to... What was that hitbox? Okay. Are you not supposed to lock on to Pontiff? I know a lot of people, like, don't lock on in this game and are like, oh, well, if you wouldn't lock on, it would be easier. But, uh, like, I got that comment a lot on Manus. Um, but in my experience, Manus is a lot easier if you lock on, right? Or for me. It's a lot easier for me if I lock on. Um, but I wonder if you're not supposed to lock on to Pontiff, even though, like, in the other games... What? Hitbox. Uh, in the other games, like, during one-on-one -on -one fights, you basically always want to lock on. Though I guess Pontiff is kind of unique in that it becomes a two-on-one kind of... His shade isn't really, like, its own actor, because they do the same thing. That's not really a two-on-one, but it would make sense that it wouldn't want you to lock on for that. So his moveset would facilitate not locking on. 
Oh my god, calm down, dude. This is why I don't like Pontiff, by the way. He's just way too aggressive. Oh my god. Okay, that was a skill issue. Fully admit that. <laughs> He's way too aggressive, um, and that's really annoying. Uh, his second phase, I do think, is a lot better. I do actually really like his second phase. His first phase, however, is... Oh my god. Uh, is one of my least favorite bosses in the series. And then it goes back to his first phase moveset, if you kill his shade. Until he summons again. Oh god. <laughs> I need to... I, I think I get greedy with Pontiff, because he's incredibly fast, right? Um, and it's also kind of an instance where positioning doesn't matter as much as most bosses in the series because he's so aggressive. Um, so the way I fight him, I like try to position and then he just kind of turns 180 or he does like an annoying fast slash. Um, so like either you are in fire, in the range of a fire of his most powerful attacks or you're in the range of fire of his most annoying attacks. Um, so positioning isn't really that important. Um, he's incredibly aggressive and fast, which is incredibly annoying a lot of the time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like Ponto very much. I just don't find him that fun. It's not hard. Again, I, like, I just beat him first try. Um, didn't even use all my SDS. Uh, not that if I thought he was hard, that that would like diminish my opinion. But I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you just don't like him because he's too hard or because you're bad. No, <laughs> I just don't like fighting him. Um, and I think that's how it is for a lot of Dark Souls 3. Like, I'm not good. At Dark Souls 3, like I said, it it, it consists a lot of skill-based challenges rather than observation or strategy-based challenges. And that's fun. I like it. Um, and I'm not necessarily bad at it. I'm worse at it than the other games, but I don't think that's that makes me like it less. Um, it's just not what I prefer to test in the Dark Souls games. It's not what I find fun about the Dark Souls games. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully this didn't seem... It doesn't feel like I'm doing this too much recently. Like, I know I know I did three videos at once, but or in a row, but the first two were in the same week. And then this one is kind of just a prelude to more videos, so I have more time to work on them. Um, <laughs> again, God, okay, whatever. Comments, please leave comments if you have thoughts. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. And I would like to give a special thanks to White Flame, Harrison Briggs, Haldrapa, The Dire Gay, Funny Guy 619, Falcon, Nikki P. Jones, SD, 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 SSD, SD, XDD, Manorock, V, Emily, and Ryan Rickard for supporting the channel. I don't know how to end this. <laughs>